Um, before we start this episode, I'm literally going to ask you right now because we're going on hiatus for two to six months. So if you, if you want to keep up with me, all right, this is serious business, folks. If you want to keep up with me, you need to follow me on Instagram right now. Right now, Vine Philo, V I N E P H I L O, Vine Philo. And if you're not already following the podcast on whatever platform you listen to, um, if you're listening on Spotify, if you're listening on Apple, or if you're listening on YouTube, you need to do that right now so that you can know when I come back. Okay? Okay? So that you, you can know when I come back. Do you never want to hear me again? No, you don't. You know, you want to know when I come back. So go ahead and do that right now. I'm waiting. I'm giving you five seconds. On Apple Podcasts, it's a little plus sign right next to my name. On Spotify, I think it's also a plus sign. It might just say follow. Okay. And then on YouTube, you know what it is. It's a subscribe button. Let's do it right now. Hit the subscribe. Subscribe. Okay. You need to be notified for when I come back. Okay. Well, that's it. Love you. We're going to get into the episode now. Arrivederci. Hi, welcome to POV You're My Therapist, the podcast where I've met you, listen, and you do not get paid. Ah. It is the 33rd episode, which means it is the last episode of season two. And I am so excited because last, the first season, like I barely, I took a break. You know what I'm saying? I was getting burnt out. So I took about a one month break. It wasn't long enough. It wasn't long enough. It flew by like that. It went by extremely quickly. So I, I really, in season two, I wanted to, when I take my break, it's more, there's more planning behind it. There's more thought behind it. There's, you know, work to be done for season three. And I don't really like kind of how I've been doing things, which is like recording every week and then posting. Um, and in season three, I want guests. So that takes some planning and that takes some preparation. So I'm just very excited to be doing that. Um, so I've already started that process. I'm so excited. So I'm working on season three right now and I will be working on season three until it is time to premiere. And I'm very excited about it. Um, now this hiatus, it might last at the least it's going to last two months because for my well being, I need two months of peace. You know, I just need two months of not really, um, panicking every Friday. I want two months of having nothing to have to do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, this episode, I know you guys, we have been leaning on each other for a long time and we love each other so much, but for this episode, I really want to lead with positivity. I really do. Um, you know, life is hard and there are things going on in my life that are not my fave. <laughs> and I could sit here and be super negative about it and talk at length about it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to because I want myself to be the most positive version of myself that I have ever been. And honestly, I don't feel the need to lean into negativity anymore as a means of coping. I just don't. Um, I think I've sort of kind of gone the way of when things go bad, I do an affirmation. I tell myself an affirmation because I know what I am. I know the truth. I know who I am. And I don't, I'm not going to let the circumstances of life define me. I'm just not. I'm not going to let this shitty moment define all of the work that I've been doing and all of the things that I am going to get in this beautiful, luscious, scrumdiddlyumptious life that I'm working on for myself. So that's just where I am mentally. So I wanted to really leave you guys off with an episode that you could come back to over these next couple of months that when you're having a hard time, this is every reminder you are ever going to need. Okay, this is everything that we have learned and gone through, through POV, you're my motherfucking therapist. Okay, so I'm super excited to bring it to you. Um, I ended on number 33, episode 33, for a very good reason, because as you guys know, that's like one of my favorite numbers. I got to be yet it on me. I got to tat it on me. Um, and 33 is a big significant thing to me because I've always, one of the questions that I always find myself asking is, am I on the right path? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, Jesus, listen to me. What am I doing wrong? And I'm always asking myself that. And the thing is, there's not, I'm not doing anything wrong. And in the times of my life where I felt like I'm so fucking lost and I need guidance, not to be a little silly Billy hoodoo girl, but I would see like 33 and like 333. And 33 
to me and my Christian faith has always been significant. And that was the year that Jesus was nailed to the cross. There were three other people on the cross with him. There was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. You know, it's always been like a big thing for me. But to see it manifested in time, which as you know, I love to tell you guys that time is not real. It is just a thing that we adhere to to make the day go by. Um, but 33 really has significant meaning for me and personal reasons. But according to USA Today, 33 also is the energy of growth that plays a role in your relationships and in your work. Um, there is optimism attached to it associated with the three calls to have a positive outlook in your life. Um, the angel number is about generosity. Whether you infuse this into your friendships, into yourself, into your relationships, it is a sign to put further effort into growing your connections. I sound like one of those YouTube tarot readers. <laughs> Um, number 33 is about personal growth as well. It is about connecting with yourself, your inner being, your outer being, and then the world around you. Three, crazy. Um, for your career, it's like big things ahead. There are great things happening. Um, you're going to move to the top of the ladder. You're going to want to climb it. You're going to start wanting to really live your life with intention and thinking, these are the things that I want to do. How am I going to get there? What do I need to do to get there? Who I need, who do I need to talk to to get there? And for me, boiled all down, when I see 33, all I hear is everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. You're on the right path. You're headed on the right way. You're on the right road to find. You're doing great. Don't worry about it. You're not going to end up like the ladies in great gardens. No, no, you're going to be rich. You're going to be fruitful. You're going to be loved. You're going to be adored. You're going to have adoring children. Your children are going to be healthy. You're going to have a wonderful husband. And he's, he's going to be, he's going to be a wonderful man. He's going to be so kind to you. He's going to be such a doting and loving father. He's going to be such a great husband. He's going to care. He's going to be the one man on earth that God decided to give a brain and he's all yours. Those are the things I hear when I see the numbers. So, right. It's just a physical reminder in our world that to me, you know, things are going to work out. Everything is going to be fine and we have nothing to be afraid about. Okay. So that for me is what 33 is. I stepped into my little gray gardens era, my little 1945 Bostonian um, Cape Cod situation. Let me stop fucking around. Okay. So I also like, I look so good right now. Like if you're looking on YouTube, Mama slay. Mama, this is a slay. Like, I think this is honestly how I will be doing my makeup forever and always. I look good. My hair looks good. I look good. I look fly. Like, goddamn. Okay? So, that being said, there's a lot of things going on in my life. Today's the last day of my job. I'm afraid. I have nothing else lined up. Um... So, you know, obviously I'm scared. Obviously I'm scared. But I think, as I've been saying for a long time, this has just been a sign for the universe that, from the universe that, hey, this is, you need to focus on your shit, girl. So I'm excited for that new journey. I'm, I, although I am afraid, I am not paralyzed by fear. I am not doubting myself. I am not hesitating. I am going balls to the motherfucking walls, okay? I'm doing what I need to do. So I'm very excited about it. But this episode has to do with you, dear listener. Um, It has to do with you because as I leave you, darling, I want you to remember a few things, okay? One, that you are my perfect little angel. I love you so much, darling. As I always say at the end of every episode, I love you so much, darling. Mwah, mwah. I love you, darling, okay? Not only that... But when we are doing the work, we're going to talk about the work and doing the work and what it means to do the work and what that looks like and what that feels like and how that changes how you interact with the world around you. So recently, I've come to a situation where I... I, the outcome to me was confusing, you know. Um, I didn't like the outcome of it. It obviously had to do with something. It had to do something with a man. Obviously, it's always a man. It's always a man. But I didn't find myself being upset in any way. Um, 
you know, besides like the in, instantaneous feeling. But I didn't find myself telling myself, this is why your daddy left. <laughs> I didn't find myself being like, that's why you single. That's why you fat. I, I just didn't find myself going down the typical lane of like hurtful things that I would normally tell myself. And I realized that the reason why was because I no longer believe, a, I don't believe a lot of those things. Now, that's not permanent. There's gonna, maybe there will come a time, I hope not, but there might come a time when I am in such a terrible place that I start believing the horrible things that I tell myself again. Um, but as for now, we're not there, okay? So I didn't find myself saying any of those things at all. And what I started realizing was, particularly with men, but I'm not going to frame this conversation around men because this is something that applies to a lot of different people. Um, but in this case, it was me noticing that a lot of men have this issue and I less so find it with women, but I also know that like I can find it with a woman if I look hard enough, you know what I'm saying? So I realized that I have spent the last three years of my life dedicating it to self-betterment. Um, not wellness in the typical way, but like, you know, not like the uh, full body, all that wellness. No, like I've been really thinking about my mental wellness and all of that. So I've spent three years dedicating myself to my mind, spending time getting to know my mind and me, who I am. Okay, I've spent a lot of time doing that. And there have been people in my life who have watched me do that and they've been so proud of me. And as they've been watching me grow, there has been this feeling that because they are witnessing the growth, because they're witnessing the work being done, that they have some kind of claim to it. And I don't, I don't even know what other way that would, what I just said would mean, except for sometimes people watch you grow and they think they have claim to it and the things that you earn, but also feeling like they've done the work themselves. It's like they're exhausted from watching you work. And I've realized that like, that's very common in heterosexual relationships where women have, you know, they've sat down with their partners and they're like, tell me what I need to work on. And then, you know, that conversation happens and then the woman goes and she works on it. And then the guy doesn't actually understand what doing the work means. Some people don't actually understand what doing the work means. They think that it is having that conversation, that there is work that needs to be done, but it's not. It goes so much deeper than that. And the thing is, it's very hard to explain to them. I'm going to try my hardest to explain what it means to do the work. Doing the work looks like in a relationship, in a friendship, whatever, I am, I get angry. I have anger issues. Like, let's take this back to last summer when I had like fucking rage issues. Like you would think I was on fucking roids half the time. It was very strange. It was a, it was a weird little time in my life. I don't know what brought it on, but it was on. Um, I had a lot of anger issues. Okay. And I mean, like I was like, not with people, but like with walls, you feel me? I was very angry. So I had a lot of anger and I had a lot of rage. And the thing that I didn't realize at the time is that rage and anger are a secondary emotion and they're a secondary emotion that leads to physical, uh, it leads to a physical moment. Like it leads to you fighting, throwing punches, whatever, like dramatics, you know what I'm saying? So those are secondary emotions that lead you to have physical actions. I would think to myself, all right, I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to get mad. Like I'm chill. Like I'm not going to get mad. Like I'm cool. Like I do my little breathing exercises. I'd be like, who's that? This bitch pissing me off. I ain't going to get mad. Like I'm like, we're good. Yes, that's a part of it. But doing the work looks like asking myself, what's actually making you mad? Like what is happening in your life that your trigger, that switch that you can flip to get mad and angry and ragey and throw and punch and all that and scream is so accessible. Like, where are you lacking? Like, I was literally asking myself, like, Divine, what are you lacking? Like, are you unhappy in your friendships? Are you, do you hate your relationships, like, with men? Like, do you hate your relationship with yourself? Like, where are you angry? What is the frustration? Where, what is the factor that you, what is the missing puzzle piece? What is it? What is it? What is going on? 
Who do you need to talk to? Who do you need to express something to and get it off your chest so that you are not so trigger happy when it comes to feeling rage and expressing your anger? Like that, those are the conversations that I would have with myself. And the thing is, there's also so many ways that you can block yourself in this process. There's like sometimes, even now, I'll like, I'll I'll have a thought and I'll be like, damn, I really hate like how fucking negative I am. Like I'm fucking negative as fuck, girl. Like you negative as fuck. And then I start berating myself about how negative I am. Doing the work in that moment would look like um, me telling me, okay, say nice things about yourself right now. But there's always that part of myself that's like, no, I'm not going to do this right now. I'm going to go sit and get on my phone and I'm going to distract myself from actually feeling my feelings. I'm going to um, go eat something or I'm going to, and there are never things that are productive. It's like sitting on my phone, going through TikTok, going through Instagram, feeling different kind of feelings that are not the ones that I'm feeling and just ignoring that. That's why a lot of people like they have issues, but they find such good distractions from them. And sometimes those distractions can be positive. But at the end of the day, you might feel like you you're like, oh, my God, I don't have any rage issues anymore. I'm so good because I'm taking it out at the gym. I'm decompressing at the gym like I'm lifting, I'm throwing things. I'm so fucking strong and I'm so fucking hot and I am doing the work that I'm doing the work. You're not doing the work. You're distracting yourself. You still have problems and you're not going to notice it until you start dating somebody who already dealt with their shit and they're looking at you like, let's talk about our innermost feelings. How did you feel that one time that your daddy called you stupid? How did that make you feel? Because right now I feel for you that it would have really broken my little heart. How does that feel? And like there are people who are so in tune with their emotions that it's just like, what you're making me uncomfy. You're making me so uncomfy. I remember a couple of, two things. I remember a couple of years ago, I was watching Married at First Sight um, and it was the Australian version. And there was this girl and she walked out into the wedding chapel and she was so happy. Yeah, she, I was trying to focus back on me. She was so happy. The minute she walked out, she was just like a light. Like she was just like so happy. She was like, ah, I'm getting married. I'm getting married at first sight. I don't even know you, but I was so excited. And she's like walking down the aisle and she's like, oh my God, are you my mom-in-law? Like she was just so happy. And I remember like there was also, that reminded me of this girl that I used to go to school with who like she was just so happy. And I remember thinking, there's no way you're real. Like, there's no way you're real. I remember in high school, remembering that girl, I would tell myself, like, there's no way she's real. Like, she must have shit. Like, she must have shit. Like, obviously, everybody has shit. Like, is she faking it? Like, there's no way anybody could be this happy. And I remember at the time, I resented her for her happiness because I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that anybody could be that happy or in touch with themselves. Now, skip years later, I'm seeing this different woman on Married at First Sight Australia, and it's the same thing. She's excited. She's so happy. She's all of these things. She's, ah, she's just open. And I remember telling myself, wow, I can't wait until I feel like that. I can't wait until I walk into a room and I just feel so happy and I just feel so easy and I feel so receptive of every emotion and they don't stick to me and I feel them and I let them go and I live my life and I put out positivity into the world and I give good energy and I am just radiant I am fucking pussy glowing like fucking uh I am in competition with the sun, how fucking glowing I'm glowing. Like, you feel me? Like, I'm literally the sun's enemy. Like, you see, like, okay, I don't even have to go deeper. But I was just like, I want to be that person. And as time has gone by, as I have become so open to my feelings, yes, I cry. Yes, I get upset. Yes, there are parts of myself that I don't like. 
but I don't have an issue looking at them head on because I know they're not permanent. Because I know in spite of these negative traits that I have, despite of the parts of me that I don't like, that they are my least favorite parts of myself, that I know that I am still deserving of the love that I give myself and the love that other people have to give me. And that that bad part of me does not mean that I am only worth bad things. That bad part of me is not a definition of who I am. It is just a part of me. And there's going to come a day where I learn to love all of the parts of me, even the bad ones. And this is a process. And the thing is, there can be so many bad parts of me and I don't even know how to deal with it. And I think I'm all bad. I'm a piece of shit. Like I'm this, I'm that. All I need to understand is that at the end of the day, All it takes is knowing at the forefront of my mind that I am trying consistently to be a better person. And yes, I'm going to fuck up. Yes, I'm going to do bad things. Yes, I'm going to make terrible decisions. But that does not mean that I am a bad person at my core. There is no such thing as a bad person. People are products of their environment. They are products of things that have happened to them. They are products of the socioeconomic things that they have no control over. There is no, there is not such a thing as a bad person. There's a person who has given out bad behavior. They have made bad choices. They have succumbed to the idea that they do not deserve good things or that they do not have good to give because they are just too bad. They've done too many bad things to be, to be redeemed. Like that's it. And the thing is, that's not true. It's not true. Not to get all preachy and shit, but I don't know if you noticed, but all of Jesus's besties were whores. They were thieves. They were prostitutes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were the bad people in society. So if that person, that man, could love all of those people, how dare you fucking think that you're not lovable just because you're a little chubby? How dare you fucking think that you're not lovable because you have daddy issues because you're fucking daddy left. I ain't got shit to do with you, bitch. You were three. What were you going to do? Stand in the door. He was going to punch you to the side. Be real. You know what I'm saying? How dare you think you're not lovable because some asshole that you hooked up with in college who like ran you around the fucking circle, ran you around the block, fucking acted a fool with you, told you that. How dare you believe that? That is such a, that is such a, the word has escaped me. That is such an injustice to you and all of the things that you are and all of the things that you are good at and all of the things that you have been through that make you you. I think this year, what I've really come to the conclusion is that when I tell people that I truly believe I am perfect, some people look at me crazy Um, And that's okay because it's nobody else's business whether they think I'm perfect or not. What matters is that I think I'm perfect. And when I say I'm perfect, I'm not saying I can do no wrong. I know I do wrong. I know I fuck up all the motherfucking time. What I'm saying when I say I'm perfect is that I am the most perfect version of myself right now, bitch. Okay? I might get less perfect. I might get more perfect. But regardless, I'm still a perfect being. Why? Because I'm a child of God, bitch, okay? Because I am trying. Because I'm trying my best. I'm trying my hardest. I am trying to be a good and decent person. I'm trying to give love. And I'm trying as hard as it may be to receive love. Because receiving love, as we know, can be so hard, okay? So those are the things that I want to remind us of. And so when I'm in these situations with people and they're just not getting it, they're shutting down emotionally, they're being avoided. I don't take that. I don't take that like heavily. I don't take that on my back. I, I don't, I can't because if I do, I'm going to blame myself and there's no reason to blame myself. I'm just a girl. I'm just a lady. I'm just a person on a spinning rock trying to be sexy and slay every day. That is all you can ask of me, okay? And you want me to feel like I have to take on everybody's burden that I don't get along with? That's crazy. That's crazy and that's an anti-slay. We don't need that. 
When people have these issues that they deal with, you do not need to widen the load by taking it on as a personal problem. It is not your fault that that boy don't know how to communicate vibes. It's not. It's not. And honestly, it's not his fault either. It's nobody's fault. It's just a thing that he's bad at. He knows how to read. Okay. Um, he's not illiterate. He's not dead. He ain't deaf. He ain't illiterate. He know how to read. DDI, baby. Next time that man don't text you back, DDI. He ain't dead. He ain't deaf. He ain't illiterate. Okay. Just remember them things. All right. Like these, we cannot allow these things, these small things in the grand scheme of things to affect so much of how we feel. We just can't. It's a waste of fucking time. It's a waste of time. I don't think there has ever been a man that I've cried over, that I've been sad over, that I've literally just spiraled into the depths of depression over that was ever worth it. Never. Ever. Ever. Like, for real. And I try to think hard. I think hard sometimes. I'm like, was so-and-so worth my tears? And I'm like, I'm trying to justify it because it was embarrassing. It was really embarrassing. I'm like, the D was like kind of good. I mean, I maybe could have cried over it. Should I have? No, because you're a bad bitch. Why would you cry over that? You know, you know. And sometimes when I find myself wanting to reach back out to people who hurt me, to people who have qualities that are not... Um, I don't want to say they're bad people because, you know, I'm trying to be off that. But they have qualities that don't align with the divine that I am today. Um, When I find myself trying, wanting to reach out to them again, I just have to remind myself that I love myself more than any good night out. You know, I love myself than any fun we could have because I respect myself. Because if that person has not done anything to rectify whatever way we left our relationship off, who they haven't done any change, they're still talking shit about me. Why do you want to reach out again? Why do you want that person to be your friend? You don't need it. You don't. And I have found myself recently being like, damn, like, I really ain't got no friends in this city. This is crazy. Um, I did make one friend though at the gym period but I find myself saying like oh my god I really don't have friends in the city like that's kind of crazy and then I remind myself of why I don't have those friends and I'm like you don't have those friends because you respect yourself sis you put down a boundary it was crossed and you are you are respecting yourself you are being true to yourself you are honoring yourself by maintaining that this is a boundary that is important to me and if it's not important to you i'm not important to you and like they if they haven't apologized i have no business speaking to that person i have none especially if they know what's been done wrong You know what I'm saying? So there are times when people come and they apologize and, you know, they're like, I'm really sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I crossed this boundary, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, have a convo, build that friendship again, make the necessary alterations to continue growing with each other and being friendly with each other. But if that hasn't happened, there's no need to talk about it. And there are also, while we're talking about change, There are some people who don't know how to change. They don't know how to grow. Doing the work is really hard. When you open that Pandora's box, there is no shutting it off. Living in the delusion of being somebody who has never gone to therapy, I want to have never stepped foot into therapy so bad. That delusion, it's like you've entered two different worlds. You, the world where I am not self-aware versus the world where I'm self-aware, this world is so much harder. I'm doing the hard thing every day by waking up and deciding not to beat bitches. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm doing the hard thing every day, not waking up and decided that I want to fuck on niggas all day. You know what I'm saying? That's wild. That's real wild. 
And and it's hard. It's hard because it's like I want to be a husty. I want to be a hoe. I want to throw punches. I want to cuss. I want to fight people and their mamas. I want to yell at kids. I want to mean mug everybody and their mama. But it's like that's not who we are, is it? It's not. It's not anymore. It's not anymore. Because now we gotta we gotta think things through. We gotta be like, do I want my healed self? to deal with this situation or do I want the Caribbean um psycho to deal with that who do we want to deal with that do I want to call this man 19 times and a half and leave him like 17 crazy voice messages and then maybe like 17 crazy texts or do I just want to chill because this shit's not worth it anyways or even better the really healed version of this is it has nothing to do with me I've done everything I can. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally choosing between the id, the ego, and the super ego. And crossing into the healed version of yourself is choosing that motherfucking super ego every time. When all I want to do is go all, do I want to go all Lord of the Flies in this bitch? Do I? And the answer is I don't. Because you know why? There are consequences. I have to constantly remind myself that making the hard decision and the smart decision is setting myself up for success every time. It's saving myself a unpleasant moment, unpleasant consequences. It's saving myself money. It's saving myself time. It's saving myself effort. It's saving myself face. Even though I am shameless, I am somebody who respects myself. I respect my image. I have dignity. I have all of those things. And I have been so reserved in my life and not honestly like way before the podcast I've been so reserved and I've thought through every fucking decision to a point where it's probably like bro fuck it and just do what you want to do but I have been so thoughtful about the decisions that I make that although I didn't take any crazy chances that who knows maybe they would have catapulted me a lot further than I am I have made decisions that allow me to be where I am peacefully and not with, surrounded by chaos. Like any chaos that is in my life, I invited it into knowingly. And even while it's there, I'm doing my little calculations talking about how much is this tornado in my room going to cost me? Like I have tried to do these things and I will continue to be very to be very specific in my choices because I know the life that I want and I can't allow secondary emotions. I can't allow things that are so short-lived that do not at the end of the day matter to put me in a crazy place. It's like when I see these stories about like women who like they get mad at a man because he's cheating and then like they kill him or like they slice up his tires. I'm like, girl, you could have just gone home, pulled out the rose, got some ice cream, watched a movie. There are other niggas. There are so many other niggas. And now look at you. Future thrown away. Life behind jail. Supermax. Like all because of what? Some guy that you barely liked in the first place? That's like the crazy extent of it. But it's, I think for us in this audience, we're not, I feel like we're not really the kind to like act out that way. But we put a lot of that violence on ourselves. We berate ourselves. We're cruel to ourselves. We say horrible things to ourselves. We're like, bitch, that's why nobody love you. That's this. That's why. That's why you're alone. That's why you're single. That's why you're fat. That's why your mama don't like you. That's why this. That's why that. We put so many evil things on ourselves that, it's like, all right, so we know that um, being in this situation with this type of person is absolutely going to cause us to spiral. Uh, when they do something that hurts us or that makes us feel neglected, that makes us feel like we're not important in their lives, even though we have shown them time and time again that we're that they are important in our lives, they must be showing me something about myself. They must be seeing some part of myself that I don't even see. So I have to be mean to myself. I'm going to be a bitch to myself. I'm going to be so cruel to myself at this moment because somebody on the outside does not appreciate me. 
And we let people have so much power over us. And they're not even the ones inflicting the pain. We're doing it all by ourselves. And it's like, at the end of the day, that man is going to do something that's going to give you the ick so fucking bad. Just imagine him getting out of the car and his ass crack shows. Now you don't even like him. But you spent two days abusing yourself because he didn't text you back. How does that feel? You let a man who wears flip-flops outside in the cold, just imagine him. Just imagine him having to go get a package and sign for it and he can't find his shoes. So he puts on like a pair of slippers and he's like running outside and they don't even fit him. And he's like barely wearing any clothes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even like that man anymore. He's weird. He's weird. <laughs> like, uh- Serena Kerrigan, she said a crush is just not enough. It's just a lack of information. Slay. She's so right. She's so right because now you know that man and now you're embarrassed by him and you let him make you cry. You let him make you berate yourself. You let him make you question your self-worth. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I don't even care if he's Drake, mama. Okay. I don't care if he is the finest man that you ever saw. I don't, I don't care who he is. I don't know. Nobody, nobody in this world can make, should make you question your self-worth. And if there is anyone in this world that makes you question your self-worth, that makes you think when they don't speak to you, I'm going to be alone forever. I'm sad. I hate it here. We need to reevaluate that mama. We need to reevaluate because I understand that there's pain that comes with these things, but the healthy way of thinking about it is... I'm really sad that this person wasn't my person. I'm really sad that this situation didn't work out. I'm really sad that I didn't get this job. But that doesn't make it, fuck, I'm unhirable. I'm not worthy of any job. I'm a loser. I suck. That That's not what we should be saying. We should be saying, this was not the right opportunity. This is not the right time. This very specific thing is not the right one. Because as I have said before, rejection is protection. Rejection is protection. Okay? So we have to constantly remember that. We have to remember that in the midst of doing the work, we need to we need to think about doing the work. We have to think about who who we carry in this vessel of our body. Yes, this is present divine, but this is divine who's been through a lot of shit. This is divine who was five. This was divine who was a baby. This is all of the versions of me that there ever have been. And I need to care for them. If I want somebody to love me and to care for me and to like princess treatment, she's baby. I'm just a girl. Like I need to see myself in the same light. I need to see myself as what I am and I need to know the wonderful qualities about myself so that when people come, they're not able to tell me what I am because I know what I am. I know who I am and I love me for all that I am and you can't tell me otherwise. I was actually just thinking today how like literally Rihanna or Beyonce, any bad bitch in this world could come up to me and be like, you're uggo. And I'd be like, and you're blind. Should I take you to the doctor? I have a great optometrist. She can help you. Like, literally. And I mean that. I'd be like, rude. But then I'd be like, shade. We need to shade. Shade back. Shade back. Hit her with the shade. Now. Because I know myself. I know who I am. I know what I look like. I know that I'm radiant. I am gorgeous. I am loving. I am kind. I am beautiful. I am scrumdiddlyumptious. I am funny. I am, I'm so many things under this sun. Like I am, I have so many good qualities about me and I cannot allow myself to let other people make me think differently. I can't. Because if anybody has that much control over me, that is a very scary situation. At the end of the day, I have to be my reinforcement. I have to be the thing that holds me together. 
because things change, people change, times change, all of it changes. But I have to have the confidence to know that I am my biggest supporter. I am my biggest lover. I am my bestest friend. I am all of the things that I wish somebody else was for me. Until that person gets here, I am those things and I'm fine. Slay. Bitch. So that's where we are. And I'm happy with where we are. I'm very happy with where I am. Because when I look into the future, I... It's scary. She's fun employed. The future is scary. There are things that I do not know. The unknown is scary. But I am, I have faith in myself. I believe in myself. I know that I will get myself where I need to be. Everything that I've gotten so far has been through my own. It's been by advocating for myself. It's been by speaking out for myself. It's been by being open with everybody around me about who I am, what I want, and how I love. It's just been that. My friendships have been me being obscenely vulnerable and opening myself up to love and giving them love. And it didn't always used to be that way. I think a lot of the times when I think talk about these things, like even me, I have the, you know, I, I have the habit of dipping into thinking that I'm just talking about dating. No, I had a time when I couldn't connect in my friendships because I didn't know who I was. Because one time my best friend who like we're friends now, I didn't talk to her for two years because she said to me, what is so wrong? I had a crush. It's always a crush. I had a crush and I didn't want to tell the crush that I had a crush. And she said, what is so wrong with telling somebody that you like them? You should just like tell them that you like them. And I was like, I would never do that. I could never do that. And she was like, why not? She was like, that's stupid. She was like, that's dumb. Like she was like, they have no idea how you feel. Just say something. Granted, I'm not like a person who like is like, tell your crush how you feel. That's not me. But I remember I was so insulted at the time, for reasons I will explain, that I was just, I just shut down emotionally and I just stopped talking. And I was like, all right, bye. And I didn't talk to her for like a year. And the thing was, when I look back, the reason why I shut down emotionally was because I was like, if I tell this person that I like them, they're not going to like me back because nobody could ever like me back because I am not likable because I am not lovable, because I'm not any of these things. So how could you even set me up for failure like that? Girl, that's crazy. That's, you know, that's really sad. That's really sad. You know? So that was me avoiding Because if I had been able to even put those thoughts into words, I would have been like, that's sad. That's sad. How do I fix that? And then how do I fix that would lead into a conversation of how do I learn to love myself? It would force me to have to pick apart myself and find things to love when all I wanted to do was hate myself. It's a hard time. It's a hard conversation. It just is fucking hard, but it's something that you have to do if you want to be happy, if you want to touch your soul, if you want to be in tune with who you are. It is so fun being in tune with who you are. Like it kind of feels like having a superpower. It really does because you're in tune with everybody around you. Like on some woo woo shit, like I feel connected to everybody Literally, I know when, and the thing is, like, it's also helped me, like, fortify my intuition. My intuition is crazy, bitch. My intuition is crazy. And, like, and it don't stress me no more. Like, I know what my intuition sounds like. And it's crazy because, like, I listen to my intuition every day in my life. And we talk about this. That was one of my biggest issues when I first started. I didn't know what that bitch looked like or sound like. But I know what my intuition looks like and sounds like now. I know. I can tell you which one of my friends is having a horrible day right now without having even spoken to them. I can tell when somebody needs something, when they need like touch, like when they need feeling, when they, when they are carrying something. 
And the thing is, like, having that ability and when I'm not in my bitter era, which, you know, I tend to be, when I'm not in my bitter era, that feels so nice to be able to, like, talk to people deeply. They share things with me. I, you know, I process and then I let it out and then I move on and we talk and it's whatever. It's nice. It's nice to be able to connect with people in that way. But before, that shit would have terrified me. I didn't like when people looked at me too deep in my motherfucking eyes. I did not like it when people looked at me deeply in my eyes. I'd be like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's, do you need opticals? Like, (laughs) why are you looking at me so deeply? Like, I remember there were so many people who could just like, who before they could see the sadness in me. And that's why I met so many people like that who could see the sadness in me that I did not like making eye contact with people for the longest time because I was like, you're going to clock me and it's going to annoy me. So I'm just going to look over here because I can't face this, whatever this is. And those people were mirrors. They just reminded me of what was wrong with me. And it reminded me that I constantly, it constantly reminded me that I had work to do and I didn't want to do my work. Because it was easy to be the Lulu, to go through life like there was nothing wrong, to go through life ignoring every single thing that upset me. Just if I have to walk a little bit slower, that's fine because I'm not trying to shake up the champagne bottle because once you open it, you can't close it. But the thing with being a champagne bottle is all you need is one good bump and that bitch is shooting all over the place looking like you just won the fucking all-stars game. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I hope this episode has been insightful, to say the least. Um, I really wanted to leave you guys with just something that you could come back to if you ever needed it. And this is not the end end, but, you know, it, I'm going to be gone for like two to six months. So, you know, I'm, it's going to be a little while, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but I'm excited. I'm really excited. And I'm excited for this growth that we're going to go through. I'm excited for your growth. I'm excited for my growth. I'm just super excited. And I'm excited to like not have to think about anything. And yeah. So, um, that being said, um, should I leave you with a little manifestation? Let's do a little manifestation. Let's do a little manifesting. Okay. Are you ready? I like myself. I love every part of myself, even the bad parts. I am just a girl. I am just a person living life trying to go through this world and trying to be a better me. I love every single part of me. I love my mistakes. I love my errors. I love even the deepest, darkest parts of myself. I am deserving of love and kindness and light. I deserve to know my soul. I deserve to be released from all of the pain that I have ever felt. I deserve to be released from abuse. I deserve to be released from trauma. I deserve to be kind to myself. I deserve a good, long life. I deserve love. I deserve abundance and wealth. I deserve happiness. I forgive myself. I forgive myself for every time I have been ungrateful, 
for every time I have been unkind to myself. I forgive myself for ever thinking I was a burden. I forgive myself for ever thinking that I was unlovable. I forgive myself for not knowing any better. Thank you for my wealth. Thank you for this everlasting love. Thank you for the depth that I feel my emotions, that I live life, and that I love. Period. Kisses all over your face. Okay, well, that is a wrap on season two. I love you so much. You are my perfect little angel. I hope you have an amazing summer. I hope you have a good time. I hope you enjoy yourself. I hope you are spoiled. I hope you eat good food. I hope you go to the beach. I hope you have fun. I just hope you have fun. You deserve fun. You deserve so much fun. I do too. And I can't wait to have it. <laughs> All right. Bye, darlings. Um, if you want to keep up with me during this time, you can always follow me on Instagram at VineFilo, V I N E P H I L O, V I N E P H I L O. You can also follow me on TikTok at V I N E P H I L O, and on Twitter at V H I. V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O. I will be very active on there. So can't wait to see you. I love you. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure that you hit that follow button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, make sure you hit that little plus sign on Apple uh, podcast just so you know when I'm back, just so you know when I return. If you're not doing that already, you need to do it right now. Let's take a second. You're going to do that right now. Okay, go ahead and do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye. Mwah.